Shelley Ann Field told me about a disastrous date with Frank Sinatra um, when she was a young starlet. Um, she received a phone call from Sinatra um, telling her that he'd like to take her out when he came over to England. He'd seen her picture in some magazine and really fancied her. Um, and he asked her if she liked to party and she, not realising what that meant, said she did. Um, and he sent her clothes and jewellery to wear and took her out to meet his friends um, who of course amongst the most famous in the land um, she was so nervous that when she um, met uh, Peter Lawford and his wife she spilt champagne over Peter Lawford's wife not once but twice um, <laughs> and Sinatra was Mr Charming until they arrived at a nightclub where they were mobbed by photographers um, he thought that Shirley Anfield, being a young, ambitious actress, uh, had tipped off the press and he cold shouldered her for the rest of the evening. She, not unnaturally, wanted to go home, um, but she was told by some archers, minders, that uh, as she was his date, she couldn't possibly leave until he left. The stories I'm telling you all appear in my book, My Life with the Stars. As I mentioned earlier, my tasks as a journalist included taking dancing lessons from Strictly Come Dancing's glamorous Aaron Bow. I asked her if we could pose for some sexy publicity pictures together like she did with some of her dance partners and she said yes. But I quickly became aware that our photographer um, was hesitating uh, because while Aaron was saying yes, my wife Heather who was looking on was mouthing no. Um, but uh, as you can see, I did get to put my and on uh, uh, Aaron's uh, thigh. Bruce Forsyth, as you all know, recently announced he was quit as co-host of Strictly. And uh, Anton um, Dubek was one of the favourites to take over from him. Um, but Aaron told me when I was writing my book, Anton would love to present TV shows um, and Bruce is his idol. Bruce plays such a large part in the show and it will be hard to replace him when he eventually decides to go. But Anton looks like a younger version of Bruce. He's even got the Bruce Forsyth chin, and like Bruce, he has got great charisma, charm, and wit. Forsyth has admitted he's got an ego, but the glamorous Erin, who was nicknamed Miss Whiplash for the relentless training she gave her celebrity partners to whip them into shape, told me that when she was in Strictly, uh, contrary to what has been claimed, Bruce and his fellow presenter Tess Daly are not at all aloof. Other comedians tell jokes about Forsyth's ego. My favourite is when Bruce allegedly made a personal appearance at an old people's home. Uh, he found there was nobody in the reception area and an old lady from the home came up and asked if she could help him. And Bruce arrogantly replied, Do you know who I am? And she said, No, but Matron will tell you. <laughs> uh, the most emotional and dramatic story. There are so many amusing anecdotes in the book, and one of my favourites is about an actress from a former era, Dame Edith Evans. Now, this was told to me by my great friend and former West End actor, Alan Baker, who introduced me. Um, and Alan, who's great raconteur, um, is going to come back. Well, the lady that Tony refers to, Edith Evans, of course, I, in actual fact, I never actually played with her. But she was notorious for, or famous for her famous line in uh, The Importance of Being Earnest, the handbag line, which she never really got over. But this story was told to me by Kenneth Williams. The story with Edith Evan goes back to the war, war years and when food, of course, was very short. And she had uh, what she referred to as chambers in opposite Harrods. And one day she found out that the Harrods had got in uh, a load of pineapples. And so she went across the road to Harrods and she walked in. So I understand, I understand you have pineapples. And the girl said, yes. She said, well, how much are they? And the girl said, oh, they're ten shillings and sixpence. And Edith Evans said, ten shillings and sixpence? Here's eleven shillings. I think I trodden a grape on the way in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very fortunate. Uh, I was with Olivia's company at the Old Vic many years ago before the National Theatre was formed. And uh, Olivia was very proud he didn't mind about the knighthood or all the other things that had been showered upon him. One thing he was very proud of was the fact that he had been 
had a packet of syrup, make of cigarettes, uh, named after him. And I, at the very first morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm in the green room, surrounded by all these great names, Olivia amongst them, and he came across to me, and I was smoking cigarette, and he said, um, what do you smoke, dear boy? And I said, um, I was about 20 at the time, I said, well, I, I, I smoke guards. Guards? Guards? Yeah, yeah, it, uh, why do you smoke guards? I said, well, yeah, I get coupons with guards. <laughs> and he took out this packet of Olivia. And he said, you get parts with the... <laughs> Perhaps the most fun I had was organising a soccer uh, coaching course for youngsters with former Chelsea star Peter Osgood in Surrey. I invited along former soccer legend Ted Drake, um, who was in his 80s, and he strode over to where we were coaching in groups, even though it was drizzling and he was wearing a smart blazer. One of the kids in my group asked his mate, who's this old geezer? I told him that Ted had been one of the greatest forwards in the game and his neck muscles were so strong he could head a ball harder than anyone. Ted offered to demonstrate, despite the fact, as I say, he was in his 80s. So I threw the ball in the air to him and he headed it so hard at the youngster that it knocked the boy clean off his feet. <laughs> the kids loved it and Ted was asked to do it again. But Peter Osborne came running across shouting, Tony, what are you doing? You'll kill him. Um, a lot of people had given me advice and Gorton and Simpson, who wrote Hancock's Half Hour and Steptoe and Son, encouraged me to write a one-act comedy called Hacking It about a run-down newspaper office in Eastbourne. This was filmed and shown at the Winter Gardens up the road. I've also written a fantasy book called The Secret Potion, um, which has been recommended by June Whitfield, uh, who says it's ideal for a film script, uh, as it's got so much drama and humour in it, and it's perfect for Harry Potter fans. 